It's been a while since I've experienced any paranormal activity in my life. This happened a day and a half ago, and because I hadn't had any experiences recently, it scared the crap out of me. I was watching my dad's dog Charlie for a week and a bit while he was in the hospital. Nothing bad, just a knee replacement. I was staying in his new apartment, which was an old Victorian house converted into three apartment units. My dad lives on the third floor slash attic, which used to be the servants' quarters. It's a really nice, newly modelled home with lots of character. The bedroom and bathroom are separate from the rest of the apartment, with a set of about five stairs leading down to it. The week started off great. I dropped my dad off at the hospital and said goodbye to my fiance and headed over to the apartment. I figured it would be a great week of relaxing. I work from home now, so I'd be able to work from the apartment and take care of Charlie. Charlie is a big golden doodle mix, about 12 years old now. He's a gentle giant who loves taking naps on his heated bed. The first few days, I could hear creaking, scratching, and banging at night, but chalked that up to the old howl noises. Charlie didn't seem too bothered, so it didn't set off any alarms. My fiancé came over on the third day to help me clean up the apartment. My dad is recently divorced, so he doesn't have a great grasp of personal hygiene or cleanliness. We set to work and started moving furniture to vacuum, mop, and started sanitising the kitchen and bathroom. Halfway through the cleaning, Charlie started to get unsettled. He had been fine up until this point, but he was now anxiously pacing the hallway in front of the stairs to the bedroom. I tried to get him to go for a pee, or to at least show me what he wanted, but he wouldn't budge from the stairs. My fiancé was starting to get frustrated with Charlie because he was crying and barking at nothing. He went to move Charlie, and as soon as he touched his collar, Charlie ran howling into the room. At this point, my fiancé was done. He ran into the bedroom after him and chased him out. He shut the door and we went back to cleaning. We assumed there may be a rat or something in the bedroom, so we bought a trap. My fiancé had to head back to work the next morning, and it was a long commute, so he went home around 9pm. I was still in the kitchen, prepping some microwave meals for my dad after we got back. Charlie still hadn't given up on the bedroom, and was scratching at the door. I took him for a walk so he would settle, and when we got back, he gave up and went to sleep. I decided to just head to bed because I was exhausted. I was on the pull-out couch in the living room, so I set up some TV to watch while I fell asleep. I woke up around 2.30am, desperately needing the bathroom. I was a bit hesitant to go into the bedroom after Charlie's reaction to it. I didn't need a rat running over my foot while I was peeing. I uneasily relieved myself and went back to the living room. When I got back, the TV was off. I'd left it on, and it had been on when I went to the bathroom. I went to turn it back on, and I could see the outline of someone on the TV screen. They moved behind a wall as I watched, and I freaked out and ran to the bedroom to call 911. I thought for sure someone had broken in. Charlie was barking loudly at this point, and I had to let him into the room with me to protect him. The police got there in a few minutes, but honestly, it felt like forever. I explained everything to them, and they searched everywhere. There was no forced entry, no footprints, nothing stolen or broken, and no evidence of anything. They left an officer parked outside the apartment complex for an hour after the incident. I was able to sleep a bit after they left, but only with Charlie on the bed with me and the TV on. The next night was the last night I was able to stay there. I woke up around 1.30am, just scratching at the bedroom door. It sounded like Charlie had trapped himself inside. I went over to the door and flung it open, expecting Charlie to run out. There was nothing behind the door. He wasn't in the bedroom, and the scratching had been occurring only a second before I opened the door. I checked the bathroom. Nothing. I turned around and saw him anxiously anxiously sitting, watching me from outside the bedroom door. I walked toward him just as the door swung shut slowly from the inside. It was black in the room, and I was terrified. I ran for the door and opened it quickly and almost ran into Charlie. I grabbed my things quickly and got Charlie all packed up and threw everything in the car. I had forgotten his leash, so I went back into the apartment. I could have sworn that as I was leaving, I could see a person on the TV screen again. 
I said to myself, screw my landlord's rule about no dogs. There was no way we were staying there anymore. My fiancé thinks I'm overreacting and is not too happy about having a £120 dog at our home, but I couldn't do it. I talked with my dad the next day and he said he's never had any experiences in that apartment, but that Charlie has never really liked the bedroom or the hallway leading to the bedroom, which is where I saw the person. I told him I'd never stay there again. Charlie is very happy we're here with us until my dad gets out of inpatient rehab for his knee. My fiancé can suck it up for three more days. I'll still have to go over to walk Charlie, but I'll never go back inside. We recently lost our baby girl, Missy. She was a special kitty. She lived with me for 10 amazing years after I adopted her from the shelter. Her old owner had passed away suddenly in the home with her when she was six years old, so she had a hard time trusting me at first. It took almost two full years to get her to trust me enough to pick her up. Despite how difficult it was to get Missy to warm up to me, she was so loving. After she did finally warm up, Missy was a cuddle bear. Even if she didn't want to be touched, she always wanted to be in the same room as us. She slept on the bed every night, took over our laps whenever we were sitting, and constantly would pat our heads and play with our hair. Missy was fiercely protected of us too. Anytime we were in pain or sad, she would find a way to cheer us up. She was clumsy, so it wasn't too hard to make us laugh. The night she passed was the hardest night of my life. Her heart failed from an infection we had been treating for a few weeks. We decided then and there to save her more suffering. We told her what was going to happen and, instead of her fighting the vet and us like normal, she killed upon my lap and peacefully went to sleep before we could euthanize her. She went out on her own terms, in her mama's lap, sleeping peacefully. That night, we noticed that all the paranormal activity we'd been experiencing was silent. Nothing happened. The next day, we were expecting the usual slamming of cabinets and shadow figures in the hall. Instead, we saw Missy laying on the couch watching us. That night, we woke up to some rustling sounds only to feel her jumping on the bed. The rustling noises stopped immediately. We didn't hear see her that night, but we knew she was there. The activity has been at a standstill for almost a week now. Every once in a while, we see a flash of Missy out of the corner of our eye, but nothing else has happened. I think our baby girl is protecting us in death. I just hope she's found some peace in death. Fly high, little bean. Recently, I was asked by my cousin to babysit her three-year-old daughter and her newborn. We'll call the three-year-old JJ and the newborn W for the purposes of this story. My cousin and I are very close and I was even a bridesmaid in her wedding. JJ loves me and we always have such a good time together. My partner decided to stay at our apartment for the weekend while I went to see my cousins. My partner and I have experienced many changes recently, including a new house, new jobs for both of us, and the loss of a close family member. We've also been experiencing an escalation in the paranormal activity happening at our new home. It had been quiet when we moved from our apartment to the house, but in the last month, it's gotten far worse. Grief and changes in schedules can increase activity, or so I've heard, so getting out to babysit was a welcome change. When I first got to my cousin's apartment, everything was great. We caught up over tea as the girls slept for their afternoon nap. Cousin headed out around 3pm and would be gone for two nights. She was worried because this was the first time she'd gone away since she had JJ. JJ was done potty training. W was four months old and bottle fed, so I reassured her everything would be totally fine. Her ex-husband would check in once on the Saturday to take the girls for lunch and I was pretty experienced in babysitting. That night after dinner and bottle feeding was done, everyone was changed and in bed, I sat up to watch some TV. I popped on some narcos and fell asleep sitting up. I woke up to a really loud commercial, only to watch the TV shut itself off. No biggie, it was a smart TV and probably had a timer. Then I heard JJ. 
She was babbling away to someone, and I could tell she was pretty unhappy with whatever was being said. Her voice was whiny and sounded like she was going to cry. I figured she was having a dream, so I went to check on her. When I got to the room, her light was on, which was unusual. The only light in the bedroom was a five foot tall floor lamp that had a button that was far too high for her to reach. She's only maybe three feet tall, and the button is located at least four and a half feet in the air. There's nothing surrounding the light that she could have climbed on, and nothing she could have moved to stand on to reach it. She was crying, and was motioning to the ceiling, saying, Zaza, he scares me. No one she has ever, ne- ever met has had the nickname Zaza. I checked with my cousin the next day to make sure. I got her back to sleep and shut off the light, after trying and failing to get more information out of her. I decided to stay up a bit to listen to her getting up and fiddling with the light. It was around midnight now, and I heard JJ moving around in her room. I heard something scrape across the floor and thought, ha, gotcha, as I ran to the bedroom. I opened the door and saw darkness. JJ was fast asleep with her face smashed into a plush toy. Nothing in the room had been touched. I freaked out a bit, thinking I was hearing things, when I heard W start to cry. I quickly closed the door so JJ wouldn't wake up. W was absolutely inconsolable. She kept staring at the ceiling and crying so hard she could barely breathe. I saw in the corner of the room that her nursing chair was rocking back and forth and it was in the middle of the room instead of against the window. I moved it back and stopped it from rocking and quiet quickly grabbed W. We went to the kitchen and just held her not knowing what to do. I fell asleep on the couch with W in a baby bassinet next to me and woke up with JJ sleeping soundly next to us. That whole day, I took the girls out and had some fun with them at the park, library, and a parent-toddler group. Their dad came to pick them up, and I asked him about what had happened the night before. He knew that our whole family had had experiences with the paranormal for most of their lives, so he said it might be the close family member who passed just checking in with us. That put me at ease, and I let him take the girls to lunch. I used the time to clean up the apartment so my cousin could come home to a clean place. I then took a shower to wash the child's stickiness off of myself. This is when I realised it wasn't my deceased family member. The family member who had passed away was not vicious and would never play a prank on someone if they knew it would scare them. While I was in the shower, a hand visibly touched the curtain and smacked it before dissipating. I cried for two hours until the girls came home and sat on the balcony the whole time. I was seriously contemplating packing everything up and taking them to my house. That night was pure terror, expecting something to happen every time there was a noise. I made up a bed for JJ in the living room where I was sleeping, and brought the bassinet out again for W. I cranked the TV and kept playing with the remote so the TV wouldn't time out. The girls seemed uneasy as well. Around 11pm, the girls were asleep when we heard the most awful scraping and dragging noise coming from the nursery. I told JJ to leave it and stay with me. I tried to ignore it, but it was obviously trying to get my attention. I turned around for two minutes to grab W and JJ, ran into the nursery. I forced myself to follow after, and when I got to the door, I saw a shadow in the corner of the room next to JJ. She was trying to reach out and touch whatever it was, and was babbling away about wanting mommy, and yes, I am a good girl. As soon as she made contact with the shadow, I watched her ponytail swing back violently, as if it was being pulled by someone as she flew backwards onto her bum. She was screaming, I was screaming, and we both ran to where baby W was to grab her. I drove over an hour with both girls back to my home, and to the safety of my partner. I took everything I could with me, and called my cousin the next morning to let her know what happened. She was crying and said that she had some scary occurrences lately, ever since our family member had passed. It only happens once a week or so, but she's apparently been touched by this entity in the shower multiple times, has seen it manifest in the living room and the girls' rooms, and has had it screwing with the electronics in her apartment as well. It's been over two days since I returned the girls to her, and she's had no experiences since. The girls are doing well and sleeping through the night. 
I hope it stays that way. The fact that the entities in our lives don't even leave little children alone scares me. I want kids one day, and I don't want a baby growing up terrified by whatever entity has latched itself onto my family. If anyone knows who Zaza might be, please let me know. I have a feeling it's either a demon or a bad spirit. Long story short, a ghost at work harassed me and my co-workers until most of us quit. There was one person who stayed behind, my old boss. Unfortunately, he's been experiencing some pretty terrible things on his own, including being scratched and possibly bitten. He's been keeping me updated on the paranormal activity in the store. Multiple new employees have quit, leaving him understaffed. This has led to him basically living at the store, which has increased his exposure to the activity. I decided to return to the store one last time, to buy a couple things after my last doctor's appointment in that city. The first thing I noticed was that my boss, we'll call him H, was looking really tired and pale. He's normally very outgoing and happy. The second thing I noticed was the mess in the store. There was a brown liquid spill on each of the white cupboards next to the cash register. Dust on every shelf, inventory everywhere, and half of the locked shelves were open. When I asked him about the mess, he just sighed and said he couldn't keep it clean anymore because of the activity. Apparently, the ghost has been creating messes and leaks throughout the store. Every time H cleans, the ghost messes it up, so he stopped cleaning. While I was in the store, we could hear random knocking noises, and when H was chasing me out... We heard a loud yell coming from right beside him. A couple of online order bags were thrown off the counter at the back while I was browsing and the music paused a bunch of times. When I was exiting the store, I turned to look through the front window and saw a man standing behind H. I had been the only person in the store for about half an hour before I left. I'm glad I never have to go back. At home, the entity has gotten bolder. Around 3am every night, My partner gets pushed out of bed, violently. He now has bruises and cuts from landing on the nightstand every night. It's been a week of him being pushed consistently. When he gets pushed, you can tell it isn't just him rolling off the bed. He lands a few feet beside the bed and has been awake a few times to feel two hands violently shoving his shoulder. We resorted to getting a railing for his side of the bed. This hasn't stopped the shoving, but it has given him time to put his arms out so he doesn't fall on his face. I've been waking up at 3am every night for the last month to something sitting in the middle of the bed between my partner and I. I can see the dent in the mattress and I can feel it shifting around as if it's getting comfy just before the shoving starts. The scariest thing about the nighttime activity is seeing both my partner and my cat reacting to whatever is in the apartment. I almost wish I was going crazy so that I could take something to make it stop. The last experience I'll talk about today happened yesterday. When my partner and I were at work, an old resident in our complex who has dementia broke into our apartment. According to his wife, he thought it was their apartment. They lived directly below us, so that makes sense. He'd gone for a walk and had ended up at our door. Someone had left the door unlocked or possibly the entity had unlocked it. When I got home, I heard my partner's Xbox playing the Halo theme and saw someone sitting on the couch. I immediately closed the door and called 911. I knew my boyfriend wouldn't be home till 10pm and it was only 5. I wasn't about to leave her to chance and that this was the entity and not a real person. The cops found the old man sitting on the couch talking to someone in the corner of the room. Apparently, my cat had been sitting next to him watching the corner intently. His wife came to apologise last night and said that her husband had been talking non-stop about the shadow man from upstairs before he had gotten into the apartment. She said that the man had been bothering him for a long time and that now her husband was petrified of the ceiling in their living room ever since he was brought back home. She kept nervously looking behind me while we chatted. I kept trying to pry information about the complex and its history from her but she rushed the conversation. The fact that three people are now having experiences with the same entity 
It's freaking me out pretty badly. I haven't been able to have my cousin come cleanse the apartment since she just had her second baby. I'm going to try cleaning the apartment tonight myself, but I don't think it'll do much. When my husband and I first started dating about 10 years ago, we lived in Huntington Beach, California. This is a well-developed suburban area, typically upper middle class, and no undeveloped places or open lots. Anyway, we were driving to the beach. I was driving and he was passenger. I still remember the exact street we were on, Edwards, heading towards Warner Boulevard. Anyway, we were sitting at a red light. We both looked over to our right at the same time and saw this thing. It was all grey and walking on two legs. There was no hair, fur or tail. It wasn't facing us, so we just saw its back. It was too small to be a grown person. Instead, it was as small as a teenager. It wasn't wearing any clothing, completely naked. It was walking off the sidewalk and into the sewer systems which were basically concrete Vs that closed up into bigger and small enclosed tunnels. We both instantly looked back at each other, eyes wide open, and said nothing. We looked back, but it was gone. Traffic started moving and we drove through the light. I don't think we said anything to each other except for, what was that? To this day, I asked my husband what, why he thinks it was. He will nervously say it was maybe a monkey or something, trying to convince himself, but we both know it was 100% not a monkey. Anybody ever seen anything like this in an urban area? I never really believed in stuff like this, but when you see something in real life and can't explain it, it makes you reconsider. In 2016, my uncle passed away due to a heart attack, or at least that's what the autopsy reported. I was 13 at the time and this man was like a father to me. My bio dad dipped as soon as he found out my mum was pregnant with me. My uncle lived with my mom, my grandma and I. We were all extremely close and my mom had finally put down the bottle after years of excessive drinking for an entire year. Her brother encouraged her and it made her push harder to be there for him in her right mind. Sadly, it's the only way she knew how to cope, so his death did trigger her to drink. I'm not mad at her for it, I just wish that she had a healthier way to deal with things. My uncle suffered from depression, seizures and some other medical conditions. Life wasn't going so smooth for him for the past couple years before he passed. I'm now okay with the fact he's gone because he's probably at peace now, and that helps the grieving process. Here's my paranormal experience. It was about a week after he had died, and the household was feeling a lot of pain at this time. I had to find things I wouldn't normally do to distract myself, so I turned on a soccer game and got on FaceTime with my best friend. This is a weird thing. My uncle had a radio in his room. Not once did I ever see or hear him use the radio. Yes, it was plugged into the wall, but like I said, I'd never heard the radio be turned on. When the game reached half time, I decided to run to the grocery store and get a snack for the rest of the game. As I'm grabbing the keys in the kitchen upstairs, I begin to walk towards the front door and this is when I hear the radio. The most random station was humming in the background and I wasn't sure where it was coming from. I listened closer and realized it was coming from his room. I told my grandma to come check it out with me, and in the dark bedroom where he died, the blue light display on the radio was shining, and the noise just poured out of the speakers. I knew it had to be him, because his death was extremely fresh. It had literally just been a week. This also happened again, when my family was in the room. We were just taking a look around, and suddenly the radio turned on again. My grandma then unplugged it, and it's been off ever since. It started when I was young. My father noticed an old man's spirit who would appear around me often. 
Then, when I was about eight years old, it took a nasty turn. Me and my brother were about to watch my first era horror movie. He was about 14, so he was perfectly able to show me paranormal activity, right? Before we started, he said he needed to make popcorn, so we went to our kitchen. After a few minutes, I got worried and went to see where he was. I saw someone walk down our stairs, right beside the kitchen. So I called out his name and followed him. I saw him turn the corner at the bottom of the stairs, so head towards his room. So I followed again. I then saw him walk into his room. I called out again and all of a sudden, I heard him calling me from upstairs with popcorn. I was so close to the room and that thing. I screamed for Zach, who eventually ripped down the stairs. It took quite some time to recover from that. Fast forward a little bit. So when I was in grade seven, I started my emo phase. You know how it goes. My buddies thought it was hardcore, so I decided to amp up the whole edgy thing. I started telling everyone I was an insane Satanist. Started carving unholy symbols into my body, all of which are scars still I have. At some point, I wasn't lying anymore. I was finding old rituals around grade nine and started getting solid responses from certain rituals. I'd go on to do rituals with pals and prove spirits exist. Once, we had a clear sentence spoken to us, so I was kind of a cool person to have around, kind of like my own little form of magic. Grade 10 rolls around, and I've stopped the whole satanic thing, but the spirits didn't stop. At first, we thought I had schizophrenia. I just kept seeing weird black shapes that would disappear after I blinked, like a weird humanoid shape in my classroom that would disappear after a few blinks. So one day, my parents took my sister to her dance lessons, and I haven't had a schizophrenic attack in a while. I'm gaming with my friends, and I gotta go for a piss. So I headed to my bathroom. Straight across from the bathroom is my mom's room. And her bathroom. Her bathroom door was closed. I pee and all that. When I'm finished, I start hearing a sound. It legit sounds like hell. Like moaning, groaning pain. Sadness. Mourning. I step out of the bathroom thinking I'm going to die. A person is in the house and I'm alone. As I step out, I notice the bathroom door in my mom's room is open. And when I look and see what I personally believe to be a Wendigo, walking down my stairs. I know they can only exist in the woods and shit, but maybe it was a stray? Hungry? Had no fur, no antlers. Canada, by the way. It totally could have been a ghost. But I'm not sure. Looked whitish, fleshy and tall. Like eight feet tall. And it was looking for something. I waited till it had gone from sight and called my parents to barricade myself in my room. They rushed home, took my sister out to dance for the day and took me to the doctors. I wasn't schizo, they said, so I don't know what that was. Fast forward a few months. And my friend I've shown some spirit proof to call me. His friend is possessed. She wasn't faking it. She did a lot of cocaine and didn't want her parents to find out. But we did a Ouija board at a cemetery. And I believe that's where the most prominent spirit is attached to me. After that cemetery visit, the girl started acting entirely differently. Throwing up, seducing my friend in front of her boyfriend, legit flashing boobs and all. I instantly felt a presence. After a few hours, we sent her home and forgot about it. Next, I did a thing for my friends and had some stuff move. Guitars detuned, whatever. Then I had an incident where I was on FaceTime with an ex, and on FaceTime, had something lock me in place and show itself to me while I was paralysed and she witnessed the whole thing. But now is where we get to current day. Super weird things. I started dating my current girlfriend, soon to be fiance, about a year and four months ago. I'm currently almost 19 and we've been living together for six months. I moved in with her and everything that's happened to me has followed. Whenever we argue about stupid small things, our door opens on its own. We hear the latch unlatch and see the crystal doorknob turn. It spooked us a few times, but always ended the arguments. Lights turn on and off. It's kind of normal for us now. But we had an experience that kickstarted more terrifying ones. Many, many more. 
I was playing guitar with a good friend, showing him how I've improved. As I'm playing, the guitar starts to cut out. No biggie, right? I'm using an old tube amp, that's normal. But then it cuts out entirely. And through the silence, we heard a small child yell, hey, at us, as if to grab our attention. Then the guitar starts playing again. All of a sudden, the sound was just turned back on. So we quietly left the room and talked about it with some people. A few days later, after my girlfriend's family patronizes me about how they're clairvoyant and connected to the spirits. Sure guys, it's not like me, the literal beacon knows what he's saying and how I'm not and have an active imagination. I have another experience. I go downstairs to grab some weed and stand in our pitch black hallway before our bedroom to text my girlfriend. As I'm texting, our door opens for me. As I turn to it, slowly but surely, I instantly tell her and we're convinced something is up by this point. Then, as I was alone playing some VR game with no voice lines or dialogue, etc., and as I'm trying to reload my gun, a magazine just randomly floated into my gun. I jokingly said thank you and heard someone say very clearly in front of me, in the room, you're welcome. I ripped the VR off and thought I was tripping out. I wasn't. The room door was open and was slowly closing. A few days go by and my girlfriend is getting freaked out. She heads to work and I hop on some VR again. Something happened again, very scary like seeing it, but it was traumatic and I can't quite remember what happened. It shook me up pretty bad, but I'm pretty sure I felt it touch me and saw its feet under my nose in the VR. I don't know, don't quote me on that specific one. When I visit my mum at her place, lights always flicker off when I walk by in front of her. She remembers all these stories from me saying I've seen something and I'm terrified. She believes something has latched onto me, and she also believes I can see the dead even if they don't want me to. There's many more stories, from us leaving mirrors facing each other for weeks and seeing weird things with that, many of me being touched, my girlfriend being touched, and stuff being thrown and pushed in front of multiple people. There are also malicious stories, which I was going to write about while mentioning the cemetery, but I know these mild stories won't really be believed. I'd always been certain of what I saw, but when I first became aware of shadow people as a commonly reported phenomena, any doubt I had about the incident disappeared. So many people have tried to tell me that what I experienced was just a dream, or simply brushed it off with that look that says, this guy's either nuts or lying. And honestly, it's time that people stop taking victims of paranormal visitation at their word. In an age where we're starting to wake up to the fact that victims of all forms of abuse deserve a voice and representation, it's sad to see so many people disregarded as mentally ill or confused, just because their experience lacks an accredited scientific explanation. My experience was not as extreme as some that I've heard from others on various paranormal forums and podcasts, but it has affected my life in a number of ways. And to have the source of so many anxieties and frustrations in your life disregarded as a dream or a fiction leaves a person feeling very alone, unable to really explore their trauma because the subject is so taboo. And very few people are willing to take your account seriously and help your search for answers. This is my story, and I assure you, I have nothing to gain by bringing you a false account. I just want to put my testimony out there so that other experiences can know that they are not alone and they are, probably, not crazy. There are things in this life that do not yet have a scientific explanation, and humanity is not the only sentient intelligence that operates in this world. Beyond that, I really don't know a damn thing, but accepting that fact is the first step in beginning to fully understand the nature of this world, or any others that may exist. The first time I saw it, I was about eight, maybe as old as ten. I was living in a dingy little house in Clear Lake, Iowa, in what you'd consider to be the trashier part of a small tourist town. My room was at the end of a long hallway. On the right side of the hall, if you were looking toward it from the kitchen, 
On the opposite end, across the hall, the left side, was my toddler sister's room. And in the middle of the hall on the left was the door to my parents' room. One morning, I got out of bed and started moving toward the kitchen. The figure appeared. It sort of leaned into the hall from the living room, which was adjacent to the kitchen. It was a tall black figure, black as in pitch black, but sort of smoky and hazy, like it was just a bunch of compressed black smoke molded into a human form. Everyone seemed tall to me as a kid, but this thing certainly seemed taller than my parents, who were 5'5 five five and about 5'6 respectively. The only distinguishable feature on the being were two glowing red eyes, just like circular LEDs on its face. They didn't really seem to be the size and shape that a human eye really is, but truly round and glowing brightly. This detail I'm sort of fuzzy on, but that's what I recall. From the moment it leaned into view, the thing was just watching me. And when I saw it, I stopped and watched it back. I wasn't exactly scared, but had the distinct impression that this was all it was there to do, to watch. I knew this wasn't normal. I knew this wasn't something that I should be seeing in the real world, and I was uncomfortable. But all in all, the thing was non-threatening and didn't make any advancements on me. It just stood there for a minute or two and then leaned back out into the living room. I didn't follow it to see if it had disappeared. I just went back to my room until my parents woke up. I never woke up from this experience. My day progressed seamlessly into a normal day. I knew this wasn't a dream because I was very familiar with my dreams. I had constant night terrors in this house, but I'll get into that later on. The point being, the kinds of dreams I had were more distinctly bizarre and surreal than this experience. And I always woke up with an understanding that what I had experienced that night was just a dream. This was not the case that morning. If I was dreaming that morning, then I'm still dreaming because I never woke up from that. The second experience was just as brief, but a bit more menacing. I can't say how much time passed between the two events, but this incident was in the dead middle of the day, in full daylight with other people in the house going about their daily business. My mother was in the living room and I had just walked into the kitchen and toward the hall. I was now standing approximately where the figure had been on the first occasion looking down toward my room and my sister's. Suddenly, the figure appeared. This is where it gets really bizarre, because the thing actually crept out of my room. I mean, this fine thing was literally creeping, like some old school Scooby-Doo villain, walking on tiptoes with its arms raised and hands bent towards the floor. If you get what I'm illustrating here, you should probably laugh, because it was just as goofy as it sounds. It crept from my room into my sister's room, which is what it really freaked me out about this event. The whole event was over in just a few seconds. Moving in that bizarre manner, it, it had its head turned toward me the whole time. From the moment it crossed the threshold of my door, its eyes were already on me, as if to say, yeah, bitch, I'm here, straight creeping around your house, and there's nothing you can do about it. No one's gonna believe you. I had already told my mum about the first sighting, and of course, she dismissed it as a dream or an overactive imagination. So I didn't bring it up, but I was really scared that it had some sinister intentions with my sister. I do remember her having some nightmares around this time, which I heard from my room. Her crying to my mom about how the creature from the Black Lagoon, a movie we watched often in our household, was standing in the corner of her room. I asked her about this years later, but she doesn't remember any details on that. That's it. That's all I saw of the shadow person. But there's another element to my life at this house that I feel might be relevant to what I experienced. As I mentioned earlier, I was prone to night terrors while living in this house. Vivid but bizarre nightmares that almost always had something to do with being chased by various demons, monsters, etc. I'd need a whole post just to describe the details of these dreams. But I later on realized that on some of these occasions, I had actually experienced some sleep paralysis and astral travel. I think that's what a pretty woo-woo term to use, but that's the lingo people use, so I'll stick with it. One recurring type of dream I had went like this. I'd be lying in bed. Everything seemed to be completely normal in my room. 
as I was in waking life. But I'd get this feeling, this instinctual understanding that something horrible was about to come through my door. I'd start to panic, but would be unable to move my body. So rather than use my arms and legs to physically leave my bed, I would, through a sheer force of will, hover off my bed and float to the corner of the ceiling, as out of reach as possible. Nothing else was really different about my room and these experiences, except for that dread that something was trying to get in. Another night, I had a similar dream, where I woke up in my familiar room to find a tall, hairy man standing above me, reaching for me. I had the strong sense that this skinny, ape-like man was there to take me, and I remember doing my best to resist him, but the ending to that dream is fuzzy. That shit freaks me out to this day, more than the shadow person encounters, because hairy men are a pretty common occurrence in high strangeness research. So I can't help but worry that there was some reality to that experience. I bring these dreams up because it seems that vivid nightmares in certain locations, this only happened in that house, that also have reported paranormal activity, indicates a relationship between the two. If you subscribe to the idea that these beings feed off fear, then it seems plausible that the two are connected. When I was in high school, I had my first experience with sleep paralysis. I was in a van on a school trip and was sleeping with my head pointed down. When I woke up and realized I was still asleep, I frantically tried to jerk myself awake. It felt like I couldn't breathe, but I woke up before I tried to yell. Episodes like this one continued, but only when I took naps. However, I had never experienced anything paranormal during this episode. I quit taking naps, but it didn't matter. My worst experience ever was in my childhood home. I fell asleep lying on my back, and I woke up when my closet door opened. It was open just enough that I couldn't see inside, but I felt like something was in there. I tried to move my head, but I wasn't able to. I so badly wanted to get a better angle so that I could reassure myself that nothing was in there. The door opened up a bit more to reveal a face. Now, let me tell you, I'm not exaggerating at all when I say that this face looked like, for lack of a better wording, an old woman who had severely abused methamphetamine. She shot me an unnaturally wide grin, to which I could see the detail of her rotted gum line. We had this intense connection to one another. Just from one glance, I was able to tell that she knew I was paralysed, and my own fear was fueling her happiness. I didn't see her reach for it, but the door slammed shut so hard that I felt it shake my bed. Then I woke up for real. I assumed I had a terrible dream and didn't sleep well the rest of the night. I woke up the next morning and went to grab some clothes to get dressed with after a shower. Because I had a small room at the time, I kept my dresser in my closet. I went to grab the doorknob and I pulled it straight out of the door. I pushed it back into the door and managed to get the door opened. The other side of the doorknob was against the wall in my closet. The only thing that made sense to me was that something slammed my door so hard that it broke the screw that held the knob together. I asked both my parents and my sister if they were in the room the night before. When they said no, I explained to them what had happened. My parents thought that I was making stuff up to scare my sister and completely disregarded it. After all, this wasn't the only time that things out of the blue had occurred in our home. My mother and sister were often frightened about certain things that happened in the house and believed them to be paranormal. My stepdad was the only one that would 100% try to defuse these situations by saying, we have an old house, etc. He eventually started to notice these odd occurrences as time went on, but that's a story for another time. Four or so years later, I live in a different town and smoke weed every night before bed because it keeps me from dreaming. And because I like it. I don't think anything has followed me from that house, but I think it knows when I'm back home. Firstly, many years ago now, I was attending college and sharing a two-bedroom apartment with a friend. 
The woman who is now my wife was regularly staying in one of the bedrooms with me by this point in time. I had woken in the middle of the night, roughly 2.30 I believe, but it was many, many years ago now. And looking up, I saw a shadow in the corner of the room that was in the shape of a man looking towards or away from the bed. The shadow was somewhat taller and narrower than my roommate's, so I was sure it wasn't him. Not that he had ever spent time in my room, period, let alone the middle of the night. So I reached over and made sure to have my hand on my wife to verify it wasn't somehow her there. And feeling her asleep next to me, I rolled the other direction to grab the handgun from my nightstand. With the gun in hand, I looked back up to an empty corner. The initial strangeness passed almost immediately, and I simply placed the handgun back on the nightstand and went back to sleep. While in class the next day, it occurred to me, that corner was adjacent to the wall with the only window in the room. Therefore, even had there been a man standing directly outside that window, there would be no way for that perfect head, shoulders, body shaped shadow to project into that corner. All the same, I concluded that it was simply a product of my being not completely awake in the middle of the night, until I got home and talked to my wife that evening. The first thing she said when I walked into the apartment was to talk of the strange dream she'd had the night prior, and ask if I had gotten up in the night and gone into that corner for some bizarre reason. My response being, I hadn't left the bed, but had seen a humanoid shadow. We concluded she had seen the exact same thing I did, only roughly 30 minutes further on in the night. Her being a confirmed believer in ghosts, she assumed it was such. While I enjoy reading and watching videos on the supernatural, I'd experienced no such things myself at that point, and still wouldn't call myself a believer in ghosts. We went about our evening thinking no more about the strange shadow, until my roommate got home later into the night. Being a very boisterous individual, he walked through the door yelling, you guys won't believe the crazy shit I saw last night, and proceeded to tell the two of us about the shadow man he saw in the middle of the night, directly opposite the wall my wife and I had seen. We of course told him about having seen the same thing, and we all went, ooh, and I continued to think of it as a shared hallucination. As it happened, we had another friend who would stay one night a week with us, having only a single day with a morning class during the week. He would then head to his home an hour and a bit away after class until the next week. He had done that a handful of times to this point and had been there that night, but none of us had talked to him again until it was time for him to come down again that next week. That next week, instead of seeing him, I got a phone call saying that he wasn't going to be staying the night with us from then on, having decided to simply wake up extra early and make the drive down the same morning of the class. Somewhat put off, it took some prodding for him to eventually grudgingly admit he had seen a shadow of a man, standing at the edge of the kitchen looking over him, laying on a futon in the living room the previous week, and was bothered enough, he just didn't want to spend a night in the apartment again. That night, he had seen the shape obviously was the same night as the other three of us. I never had any other even remotely paranormal experiences in that apartment, nor anywhere else for several years after this night. And despite every person I tell that to, claiming it was a ghost, I again simply won't say that. In my mind, it was the oddest of coincidences, a shared bit of half a sleep trick of the brain we all experienced on the same night. And I don't know that any of us ever reported anything weird the rest of the time we were in that apartment. The next thing though, bothers me. It bothers me to the point where I've avoided telling people since it happened. And to my knowledge, my wife has too. A handful of years back, my family of four was in our SUV, heading to my in-laws to let the kids stay with them for a while and give my wife and I a month alone, as this happened on the way over with all four of us in the car. We had been driving a few hours and had stopped for a bathroom break and a soda, with me sending my parents a text message to update my parents on the journey, right before pulling back out of the parking lot and onto the freeway. We were due to change roads in 10 or 15 miles, with the interstate separating into a spur road via a large arcing overpass, going from the route we were on to begin the new road. Chatting away with my wife after what felt like 20 minutes, I asked her if I had somehow missed the interchange and all the associated signage. 
because it felt we have had to have made those few miles already. As soon as she confirmed that she too did not remember having passed that turn yet, we passed a sign welcoming us into the next state. Not only had we missed the road we were supposed to merge onto, somehow we were 40 miles or so away from that road. At the first exit we came to, I pulled off the highway to go back over the situation. I checked my phone, remembering I had texted my parents right before getting back into the highway, and it had been 30 minutes since I sent that text. I pulled up Google Maps on my phone to verify what I already knew in my mind, which is that we were miles from where we should have been, or ever could have been. Somehow, in a vehicle that won't even do 100 miles an hour, we had gone 60 miles in only 30 minutes. Not knowing what else to do, I called my parents, but was only told to watch my speed and pay more attention. They wouldn't or couldn't understand that speeding to achieve that sort of pace wasn't mathematically possible, much less when I had the cruise control set at just over 70 miles an hour. I don't expect to find answers to what happened that day. I've no idea what such an explanation would look like, even if there was a rational one to be had. There was nothing else strange about the trip. We phoned my in-laws and told them we would be late having taken a new way to get there. I'm just to the point of wanting to put it out there in some place like this, where even if people laugh, it's no big deal. So there, you have the two strangest things that have ever happened to me in my life. One to me again is nothing, the other unnerves me years later, because I just can't rationalise it, and the other only responses have been bemusement and disbelief. Even though I had some paranormal stuff happening when I was young, it's nothing I would say really is. Although, the real stuff starts from about one year ago. My mother, who is Christian, was cleaning an old church and found some bottles of, I suppose, wine, dating from around 1500. I didn't really care, but one of them looked like a rum bottle, and being a lover of all pirate stuff, I decided to keep it. Apparently, a big mistake. She had to go to work afterwards and left me alone at home for five days. The first one, I heard footsteps all around the third floor in the evening, being in the second. At first I thought it was my cat, but after closing my door, I heard footsteps go down the stairs really fast and a bang on the door. I didn't sleep the whole night because I just couldn't. I wasn't even afraid and really wanted to find answers, but thought it was better for me to be careful, watch around me. I started getting chills and the room got stupid cold for the next two days. In the morning or the second day, after things had calmed down, I went for breakfast. I could feel someone was here, but probably thought it was just my brain making stuff. While I was making my bowl of cereal, I saw my cat meowing at something, even trying to put its paws on it, as if someone was there. I remembered seeing an article on how the face recognition on a phone worked, and how it can see things we don't, because it can also detect faces made by magnetic fields or some shit. So I did the stupid thing of using it, pulling out my phone and my photo app. There was a fucking face being detected right there, right where my cat was looking, in front of a white refrigerator, so no other reason for it to detect a face. I came back a few days after to check if it maybe detected some face on the fridge, did every angle, found nothing. I stood there not moving. The kitchen got stupid cold too and the chills were back. The square suddenly got bigger, implying the entity or whatever it was, was getting closer. I put my phone in my pocket, went really fast to the exit, took my dog with me and went for a walk. Coming back after about an hour, I opened the door and enter. I had COVID a few months back and still didn't get the smell back, but I could smell the worst freaking scent of my life. This was a corpse smell and living in the countryside. I'm used to having bodies of dead animals, so I know that smell. I immediately went to my mother's room, took some holy water and kept the little bottle on me in case I had another interaction. Then I took the few crosses I had in my room and put them next to my bed and my desk where I was about to spend the rest of my day. The room got less cold. I heard bonking on the ceiling multiple times 
and my door opened for no reason. I although slept well, probably because I was safe and really, really tired. The next day came the big day. I decided to look for the cause of it all, and after feeling how freaking cold that bottle was, I knew it was his fault. I tried to think of how I could get rid of the entity in it, and went to take salt and more holy water. Putting the necklace with a cross I was offered by monks, I brought the bottle in my living room. I could hear sounds, like if something tried to get up and go somewhere as fast as possible. Thinking the entity was probably coming, I put the bottle on the ground, threw holy water and salt on it, and not really knowing what else to say, I asked God for help, and if he could stop me if that wasn't the right choice. I took the bottle and threw it on the ground. As it exploded, I heard like a gun being shot and got scared the shit out. For the rest of the week, nothing happened. I told my mother, but of course she didn't want to believe me. A few weeks later, as I helped clean the church out, the guardian of the place told me his great-grandfather was killed during World War II in that church with a Sten, a German automatic gun during the war. There also were reports of an old man walking in the cemetery next to the church at night. Now, I don't know the relation between a man being killed in 1940 and some bottle of the 15th century, but after looking up some videos, the sound of the stent was definitely the sound I heard when the bottle exploded. To end this, I didn't get any more truly paranormal activities since then, but I've been getting recurrent dreams of death. Mostly the one where I have a car crash, and the other where I kill myself. And possessions. Having people being possessed in my dreams and tried to kill me. Each had one where I could feel the bite of someone on my neck, when suddenly waking up, but it disappeared five seconds after. But the worst part is that sometimes, even during the day, I suddenly feel someone watching me, always from the same spot in my room where there is a chair. I don't know why, maybe I'm getting crazy, but every time I have nightmares, I feel exactly being watched after waking up. So yeah, that's all. Although it's a pretty long story, if you have any idea of how it all worked out and why the hell I'm getting this feeling and nightmares at least once or twice per week, just let me know. Also, if you think it isn't paranormal, I would still love an explanation of the different things. Because for me, if it's not something from another world, it just doesn't make sense.